So welcome on the session for public transport. We don't have any agenda set, <laughs> so we could discuss uh, any issues with public transport you find uh, uh, outstanding and needing to be solved. And I think we all agree that public, the current public transport scheme in OpenStreetMap has issues and there has been many attempts by many different mappers to solve it, uh, including uh, uh, Polyglot's uh, attempt at uh, moving everything to nodes, uh, including the proposal for ditching public transport tags or simplified public transport schema by Roland. Uh, I don't think it's up yet. So if you want to start to discuss any of the issues uh, you can st uh, begin or i don't know i can explain public transport uh, the refined public transport schema if you want so i would prefer it if you would explain your s proposal in a few words because i haven't read it yet because it's only one week since you published it so I don't know if, if, if I should draw it. Or <laughs> so uh, the idea, <laughs> well, it will be hard to record and I have to walk around a lot. So uh, the idea is that in the current schema, you have to add too many objects with too many tags on all elements of uh, public transport route, mostly stops. Like there are stop positions, which for mo the most times uh, can be calculated automatically uh, by projecting platforms. Uh, there are platforms with misleading tagging, like uh, most people put bus equals yes on platforms, and the s schema doesn't have that. Uh, and w well, uh, that's basically all. Uh, the, the model for routes in the uh, current scheme is pretty great. Uh, the issue mostly is with stops. So, yeah. <laughs> mm, the issue I see with the route segments currently is that there's a lot of sharing between similar routes and a lot of duplication of, 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 of big parts of, of the, the route uh, segments. So um, there is a proposal from 2011, I think, which uh, proposes route segments being a separate relation which can be embedded in, in the actual root relations and when like uh, considering uh, a new schema I think we should also consider uh, including root segments as well. Uh, yes, you're correct. Uh, there was a proposal about root segments in 2011 and the idea floats up from time to time. Uh, uh, but I think that uh, we, we should go in small steps. We could also uh, improve the root relations uh, later, but if we do all things that we want to improve uh, uh, simultaneously, then the change will be too big and it has more chances to fail. <laughs> and I think root segments will complicate things because it will be root masters containing relations for roots, containing relations for root segments, containing relations for, I don't know, stops. <laughs> so it's a topic for another day, but yeah, we should keep this in mind, of course. Right, so what was I talking about? Yeah, uh, so back in the days before the current public transport schema, all we had to do to map stops was basically create a node with highway bus stops, uh, bus stop or railway tram stop, and th that was all. So th these were simpler times. We could see uh, the kind of uh, stop just by looking at its tags, and we didn't have to uh, implement support for tags like uh, tram equals yes and so on. And uh, what I wanted to do was basically uh, take us back to these times to ditch all the complex uh, stuff that was introduced later, but uh, uh, at more practical angle, because uh, currently I am working on a public transport processor for all the types of public transport for the entire world, 
so I thought it would be great if uh, public transport relations and uh, sta stations and stops uh, would be easier to process, because currently they are not. So uh, th that's what uh, I was aiming at, simpler mapping and simpler u usage of uh, public transport data. So the refined public transport proposal is uh, my uh, view on how this could be achieved. Basically, it tells that for most cases, having a single node with bus stop or tram stop or whatever railway station is enough. You, you don't have to do anything more. You don't have to project a stop position. Uh, you, you don't have to, I don't know, fill extra text for modes of transportation. Just uh, a node with one or two tags, like uh, name and type. And I was working up from that. So the, the next thing are platforms. Platforms are usually ways or areas uh, near the stop. And uh, when you get two, object, two elements, that's where the complexity starts. Because then you somehow need to link a platform to the stop node, stop object. And this means relations, because uh, simple geometric uh, closeness doesn't work, because uh, there are many different ways to find the closest node, and some of these will give you wrong results. Like if you find, uh, look for a stop close to edges of a platform, then some edge may be closer to the stop on the opposite side of the road, and so on. So we have stop nodes, we have platforms, we have stop areas, and that, that is enough for most cases, like for almost all cases for overground transport involved. Right, but um, then um, uh, the issue is what do we do with that? Like where do we place a uh, stop node? O on the road or beside the road? And if there is a platform mapped, do we place a stop node inside the platform or uh, on the road, since we have a platform, we can use stop node as stop position. And uh, and so on. Do, do we use one stop node for two stops on the opposite sides of the road or, and uh, group platforms in separate stop areas or a single stop area? Or do we always require uh, stop nodes for each side of the road? So uh, th there is a space to discuss uh, these things, and uh, these are the reasons that uh, the proposal won't be pushed to voting in the coming s uh, few months. So uh, if you have any opinion on uh, these things, or if you think that there is another better approach to simplifying uh, mapping and usage, then you're welcome to share your thoughts. I think that um, the most helpful simplification would be to drop stop positions where they are not necessary for simple bus stops. It would be enough to place um, two highway equals bus stops on both sides, uh, one high w highway equals bus stop on each side of the road. Uh, I think that stop positions are only necessary for trains at long platforms where the train is a lot shorter than the platform. So it's usually only necessary for special cases like large bus stations or train stations. Uh, two things I forgot to mention. First, uh, we don't ever need stop position. <laughs> so, uh, the reason because why tram stops are mapped on railways is because all railway stops for trains, for light rail, for subway, for trams, are mapped as a node on tracks. This uh, is historical thing. It doesn't mean that we have to do that. <laughs> it's uh, just uh, people have seen that the key is railway and things with railway key we place on railways. So, so it, it's not a requirement. And the second one uh, is that I'm talking about stop nodes, station nodes, and they don't have to be. Like there was a proposal in the pro uh, thing in proposal discussion, an opinion, that we could just place stop tags on a platform ways. But 
I don't really like this idea, but it's a possibility. I may, uh, maybe I, uh, I will give a, a big picture for the people that are not uh, really into the, what, what the, the discussion is about, because we have this um, PTV2 uh, proposal that has been approved seven years ago. And uh, my point of view is that uh, we still struggle to move to the PTV2 uh, model. And we face a, a public transport uh, model, which is about like um, uh, having platforms in the in the in the in the in the model before we had this uh, highway equal bus stop which was very simple uh, please raise your hand if you don't know the difference between pt version 1 and version 2 <laughs> yeah so pt1 was no schema. It was just a set of uh, object descriptions. Like uh, there is a wiki page for bus stops, wiki page for tram stops, and for routes, you just put everything you see, uh, everything related to route in a single relation. So it's a, it was kind of a mess, but you you knew where your stops are, and that's all. PTV2 is a, a Sebastian's uh, uh, comes after Sebastian's proposal in 2009, and it was an attempt to bring order into mapping public transport. So they have had uh, specifically distinct types of objects that were obvious what they mean, like uh, uh, a tag for platform, which means uh, a pole for waiting area or uh, some virtual waiting area or actual platform, a tag for stop position, node on highway or railway where the bus or train stops, and uh, a system for mapping routes properly, like uh, separate relations for each direction and so on. So this was more orderly schema, and the issue with it is it might be too complex because it is modeled on some r really great and solid European standards, which were supposed to be filled automatically and not with by hand. <laughs> and th that is, um, so uh, as I mentioned in uh, some of the answers, uh, mapping public transport routes uh, to PTV2 schema is a bit like writing a GTFS feed by hand. <laughs> so that's why we are try trying to undo some of the complexity. And yeah, this is exactly that. We, uh, we undo the complexity. We have this model with the, which is very detailed. PTV2 is very detailed, but uh, we still struggle to, uh, to adopt it uh, on a large scale. and. The conclusion is that you are the first to say that it's not possible to use it uh, on, a, on like a mobile app. It, there is no standard, and uh, this is very hard for us to manage. So um, there is some points on in your proposal, V3 proposal, that I disagree with, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, on the on the on the the main um, issue, which is to hide the complexity, and you said that uh, before, like on 90% of the network, it, it will work. And I, I guess that's the most important. And we really, I, I, I think we really have to agree on how to map the 90%, which makes sense. And then the details. Okay, let's discuss it. But um, uh, I don't know for, for you guys on, on your, on your, in your countries, but in France, it's still uh, very hard for the people to move to public transport V2, which has been a proposal <laughs> since years and years. And we still don't uh, go to this way. So. Um, I, st I agree with your, your V3 proposal. Uh, thanks, yeah, yeah, I also agree it goes into the really right direction. I, I did the exercise to, to build a public transport system in PTV2 pretty correctly, I would say. And it is, you don't want to do that, you're right. Like there is a lot of duplication on tags or you don't know where to put them and, and so on. Um, so the general direction, I agree. Uh, there are also some points where I think it could be more progressive. Uh, I think a highway equal bus stop, which is on the side of a highway, doesn't make sense. 
Um, but I agree that for rendering and historical reason, it's maybe the more simpler approach right now. But I think we can be there a little bit more progressive. But the general direction is cool. Also, what you're planning to do to integrate this into into MapsMe and and make it also working without time and time information um, will be a, a very very big step forward for public transportation, especially outside of Europe, which is my my my, my point of concern, because really for informal pla um, tra traffic or transport, actually this already is very very good. So thanks a lot for pushing it. Yeah, thanks a lot for agreeing. Maybe you have some <laughs> comments. Uh, I just have a question. Who here is working on informal systems? Informal systems. Okay. Informal, Informal transit in South countries, so uh, where systems don't have stop station actually, but can potentially stop in each corner. How do you solve that? I haven't mapped such uh, network yet, but I would solve it by just mapping route relations with the highway members, but without any stop members. If the stop a bus can stop at every cor every corner. In, in, in such routes, we, we also have them in Russia, it's, they are mapped as shared taxis, I think. Uh, they usually have first stop and the last stop, where people wait for the first uh, bus or a taxi. So uh, th that is a route uh, that can already be mapped in OpenStreetMap, because we have a role, hail and ride, for highways uh, in a route relation which uh, mean basically that uh, you can stop uh, a bus at any point of the ro road. Uh, it was introduced by Polyglot for some complex uh, United Kingdom routes. Yeah, he, he couldn't, could, couldn't come to Milan this time. Yeah, so, but uh, there are always first and last stops because these buses don't come from anywhere. They wait at the ends of the routes. So the stops are there, it's just not all the stops. So, so more details like... Uh, sorry? Uh, je vais parler en français. En fait, uh, la cartographie des lignes de bus, uh, des lignes de transport public, c'est très compliqué et c'est pas donné à tout le monde. Le nombre de relations qu'il fait, ça fait fuir. Hein? Moi, j'ai eu peur de, 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 de le faire. Du coup, est-ce que vous avez pensé à simplifier, genre, euh, réduire les nombres de relations et la complexité qu'il y a Parce que ce n'est pas donné à tout le monde. Si vous voulez que les gens cartographient leur territoire à, à, sur ça, il faudrait penser à, à, à plus les simplifier. Genre, y a, je pense que vous en avez parlé, mais je n'ai pas très bien compris. Les, euh, les, les, euh, les arrêts qu'on fait pour... Euh, le bus et les arrêts qu'on fait pour l'attente, en fait, c'est compliqué. Numériser deux fois hein, juste pour identifier l'arrêt, alors que si on fait en suivant hein, les arrêts, on peut avoir la ligne. Pourquoi il y a besoin de, de numériser là où s'arrête le bus et là où euh, attendent les, euh, les, les, les passagers Pourquoi ça Um, so, she, she would like to emphasize uh, two two things. I, I think uh, the complexity of the the relations that are really a blocker for people interested in uh, being involved in mapping the public transportation. It's a, a, a large step for 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 them to, to to grab the thing and to to be able to 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 map, and uh, also uh, about the the bus stops. Uh, apparently, uh, you need uh, both to map uh, the uh, where the bus stops and where the people are waiting for the bus. Um, so yeah, there, there's so two two things. Sorry, there, so there is two things. The first is the the model itself. Donc le le, le modèle en, en premier, c'est genre uh, quel tag on utilise. Et ça, on est en train d'en discuter aujourd'hui. We are discussing about the tags we are using and how to modelize the, the data. And the second one, uh, how to handle complexity. I think it's more about the tools. And uh, at Jungle Bus, we believe that uh, simple, simpler tools are needed 
to, to hide this complexity and to hide the relations. Relations are a nightmare to manage. Donc euh, les relations, c'est très difficile à gérer. Et à Junglebus, on pense qu'il faut vraiment créer des outils qui font que cette complexité elle, soit cachée pour l'utilisateur, qu'il n'ait pas à, à gérer des relations, mais qu'il ait à gérer des lignes. Et euh, en fait, euh, aujourd'hui, on a, on a encore un manque d'outils pour euh, créer la donnée, la maintenir, la faire le contrôle qualité, la visualiser et l'exporter euh, dans les formats qu'il faut. Et donc, en fait, euh, c'est un travail en cours. Quoi. So yeah, I said uh, the, the tools to create, maintain, QA and export the data and use the data are still needed and we are still on the way to produce these tools uh, with, uh, with a lot of people here. We create uh, yeah, uh, OSM to GTFS, we create uh, the Jungle Bus uh, mobile app, we have uh, uh, PT assistance uh, in, uh, in, Geo in JOSM and uh, we still need to uh, improve these tools um, once we agree on a model. Small comments. Oh, at my talk yesterday, I showed uh, a mock-up for what uh, public transport route management in Jungle Bus yeah. might look like. Uh, and yeah, uh, relations are not nightmare. They're okay. It's the tools that work with them are too complex. And we are slowly getting to the point where it's simpler, like with ID editor. Editing road restriction, turn restrictions was a nightmare in JOSM, and in ID editor, just a couple of clicks. And this should be for all kinds of relations, including public transport. So um, I, I've mapped uh, most of the public transport lines in Luxembourg. Uh, f with uh, the, the, the city's buses and the regional buses. Um, it's, it's uh, as you said, it's a nightmare. Uh, the relationships are, the relations are a nightmare. And even when you get it right, you have the perfect tools for it. Someone else will come along and, uh, oh, there's a new street there, and he'll split the line and break your relation. Um, It, uh, it, 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 I'm asking the question of are we using, is OpenStreetMap the right tool to model the lines? Um, should we even have the lines that are uh, something that we can deduce from the data? Uh, you know, you have a bus stop there, you have a bus stop there, you're going to go this way if you're a bus. Should we even have that uh, pre-computed in OpenStreetMap? Um, could we tag just where people stop and the buses stop? So those two nodes, because people do stuff with it. Simon does a gorgeous map of uh, the trams in Innsbruck that uses the stop position, for example. Um, and the routes themselves, I don't think we need them. We can uh, get the lines from the GTFS that we would either... Uh, create ourselves or get officially and when we do routing when rendering we would use that to deduce the lines from the street network we have it I would I think remove a lot of the complexity <coughs> I think it's a very valid um, discussion to, to to raise and um, and but I'm but I'm not so sure um, especially not on the part of, of um, just using GTFS because the reality I think has shown that most of the GTFS catalogs don't have a license that you can use. So um, so we are actually in an in hand and egg problem and, and, and then in a lot of, um, especially in the global south where there's a lot of transport systems to be mapped. Um, if you start with OpenStreetMap you have the big advantage that from the beginning all data is open. And um, and while as GTFS offers oftentimes are locked up then because they need financing and then there's no alternative that doesn't allow them to put a public license on it. They don't have the awareness and so on. So most of the public transport data is actually not really freely accessible. Uh, maybe I didn't explain properly what I meant. I meant GTFS as a data format. Uh, sometimes you live in a place where there is no GTFS and you would have to create it from scratch. 
or there is a GTFS, but they're not sharing it with you because they don't like you. So you would have to create it from scratch and it would be better because it's based on OSM. Um, but I, I mean using something like GTFS or GTFS as a way of, uh, of saying, oh, there's bus line number three and it goes from this stop to this stop to that stop. Um, and not having the lines in OpenStreetMap, just the stops with a GTFS stop ID in OpenStreetMap. And the information on the lines would be kept separate and would be we would use GTFS specific tools uh, with GTFS validators. There's a whole ecosystem around that we can use. Actually, um, it, it sounds interesting, but um, it was one of the things I liked about OSM public transport relations that I could um, really edit the route the bus is taking. Um, official systems work like that. They only have stops and some force points in between, so they are routing automatically. But um, it goes wrong a lot of the time. And if you want to work with OSM and you only have stops, um, you would also get uh, problems. And um, so I think, uh, yeah, we, we have problems with uh, with uh, splitting the roads, so relations get broken. But um, uh, and I, I I don't think GTFS supports force points, which would make it a bit better. You mean so f uh, a point in between two stops, yeah. which you say the bus definitely goes via that point, which makes it a bit better, but. It would still be prone to errors in OSM if you didn't uh, expli ex explicitly give the ways. Uh, G Kevin is right uh, at one thing. I, I also say, uh, think that uh, having uh, highway lines or railway lines is not essential, it's not mandatory to route relations, but most of the time it helps because first it is in some part mapping for the renderer. There are many services like open bus map, uh, like uh, public transport map on the website, like Osmond, that use these lines to highlight routes. And if we don't map them, then these sites won't be able at all to display any routes. And the, the second thing is, it's not always, as Kevin says, it's not always possible to find uh, highway lines from bus stops. It is usually possible the vice versa to find stops from highways, but not highways. You have to implement complex routing algorithms and there are options. And finally, um, finally, uh, when uh, an app has found a route using route relations, it needs to display it. In case of subways or long distance trains, uh, you can just uh, connect stop with lines, but uh, in a city, you better use actual highways to show where a person will go between stops. And for that, all highway lines are very useful. I agree, and I will add that for paratransit, for the unf un un informal uh, networks, uh, the bus uh, stops uh, everywhere on the, uh, on, on the line. So the stops don't really make sense, but the 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 route itself makes more sense so for some use case it's even better on to, to have only the the routes than to have uh, the the bus stops um, yep the main issue with uh, the highway members in the route relations is, is that uh, they break easily if someone splits away but this issue can be solved in the editor software id does it already and uh, fixes the routes if the way is split. The main issue is Yosem. If um, Yosem has not downloaded enough members, then um, it may um, create an invalid route relation by splitting the way because it cannot check if the order is correct anymore. So we should fix the editor and not force all data users to do routing on all route relations. Well, and breaking the data is partly uh, uh, mitigated by having a validator, a popular validator for all roads. I, I strongly agree. Uh, and I would go further. Uh, we need new tools. 
new tools to track the routes, the highway, the the stops that are broken. Our relations are broken by everybody. Uh, someone is uh, splitting uh, a roundabout and the relation is broken. And we need new tools for that. And um, we are thinking of new tools, but uh, it's. You know, I, I, I guess we should uh, discuss it together. Yeah. I'm uh, the author of many open street map, uh, of many views in the open street map inspector and the open street map inspector by Geofabric already has a public transport view. Uh, I redesigned it last summer and it now checks public transport version 2 routes if they are valid. It does not check everything but it checks if there are gaps in the route. So if the route is green then it's okay, if it's black then it's broken some kind. Uh, does anyone know of a tool if, uh, imagine I have this fantastic GTFS and I want to see if it says the same thing in OpenStreetMap. Uh, is there a tool that will uh, compare that and validate OpenStreetMap based on GTFS? And uh, Not yet. And you did this fantastic validator for subway line uh, lines in in some cities um, is in in all cities that have a subway uh, would it be possible to have something like that or if it doesn't exist yet for uh, every other method of public transportation um, I think a real tool to compare them, I'm, I'm not really aware of. There's something older one, um, this is GTFS Sync, Go Sync, something like that. It, I'm not sure if it still works. I looked into that some years ago and it, I was not very happy. And, um, and then we developed with um, several people this OSM to GTFS. So basically you could export the GTFS from uh, from OpenStreetMap and then you could do a diff and run if it's the same but it's not that simple because of course then you would have the same GTFS IDs you might have to make sure that that they are the right ones and you have to to look that um, that, yeah, that order of stops and so on this is all not really like Richard and GTFS because it's just a, a TXT file so There's so it's not a real GTFS tool, diff tool, but you could export, and if it's yeah. the same structure, then you have a diff, but if it's a different structure, then you will, then it's not working. So it works basically, we are doing it inside the script um, for, for simple unit testing, so that we compare actually a GTFS from OpenStreetMap with a new GTFS um, quickly um, generated, but then we know that the data source is the same. And then you can do, but if not, it's probably challenging. Uh, regarding the second point about uh, validator, uh, as I showed yesterday, uh, I am improving my subway validator to also count for trams, and I have already started uh, validating and fixing some trams, uh, mostly in uh, Eastern Europe. And yes, I have started writing a validator for all kinds of public transport in OpenStreetMap. But it, it, it is a hard task. It won't be ready in the coming couple of months because there are millions of stops. Like there are two million bus stops alone on the database. And there are tens if not hundreds of routes. So it would be a tedious task not only to code it, but also to present the validation resu results so they could be used. But yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> And about the first question again, uh, in Germany there's the Dino data format, which is a bit better than GTFS for comparing to OSM, because it basically already has like uh, uh, variants, route variants. So you could, um, if you can try to match the OSM route relations to the variants, uh, somehow then you could compare them or you could try to find uh, which ones exactly can be found in the other data set and which ones have a difference. So for example you could compare like um, a different uh, platform number on some uh, stop of the road or so. I did it manually because I'm not a magi uh, magician, I can't uh, do the matching. 
So what I did was create uh, CSV files from OSM and from the data and compared them manually by alt tabbing all the time. And um, actually I found a lot of errors in the official data <laughs> and in OSM. And in the end it was good for everyone, but um, what we don't have is uh, something that works automatically and with GTFS, Dino data is not really common. About mapping relations. I see some issues with the, the upgrade path. So the current state is that we have the old schema from 10 years back and now the, the version 2 schema. And when we start gradually like altering the, the, the schema, we will end up with, with a broad variety of, of routes mapped in, in different schemas which makes it like a, a nightmare for, for every data user, for any editor and so on. So I think uh, to some extent we, we should like look to keep the different accepted or used schemata in, in like as low as possible. If I understood you correctly, Ilya, you d uh, designed your proposal to have um, only as much incompatibilities to all the schemas as necessary. Am I right? I, I, I should clarify something about versions of public transport. Because there is a tag, public transport version, and uh, the current proposal is named public transport version 3. And this is very misleading as uh, Jerry Claw said, uh, because there are no versions of public transport. It's just there is old one, then there is current one, and there is a future one. And only one uh, schema is active at any moment. <laughs> it just, we had, it's not a version, it's an iteration. So uh, uh, having a version tag in the database is actually wrong because uh, there is only a way, uh, only a, a single way uh, a public transport route is mapped correctly. So uh, w what are we doing is we have old way of mapping things, we have c current way of mapping which was replaced the old way, so actually uh, uh, it didn't deprecate any tags, so we still have uh, old tags active. Uh, as uh, it was written in the proposal for public transport v2, uh, is that the schema doesn't make any new text mandatory and doesn't deprecate any old text. Uh, so uh, we have that, and now we don't want to replace it, we want to improve it, which means it will be the only correct schema, but it is backwards compatible to what was before, so we don't have to uh, remap hundreds of thousands of routes uh, to were made before us. So uh, one of the main points that I'm trying to achieve is to keep uh, the backwards compatibility so we don't have to remap much. <laughs> mm, I see the backward compatibility uh, for the mappers, but I don't necessarily see them for the map users since when an application uh, relied on stop positions being mandatory and present for every correct route, it will break when, when we stop mapping them because they are no longer necessary. Uh, yes, you're correct. If an app relied on public transport tags, like expected to find public transport platform or stop position, then it will break uh, because new mappers won't add these tags. But Yes, uh, si Simon, <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, there are apps that rely on the PTV2 tags, and usually they are very local. So they uh, usually work on some curated set of cities that are mapped to the new schema, but not all on the all others, because very few public transport routes in the world are mapped correctly to the current schema. And the idea is to keep the compatibility with public transport v2 schema as much as possible so you don't have to remove any text. You might have to add, add highway bus stop or railway tram stop to your routes. And the schema will still work in a city. You can just create a local page saying that like uh, in Paris or somewhere else, 
rules should be made like this, because local tagging schemas are okay in OpenStreetMap, despite what they say. And in other cities, uh, it will be a bit different, but you will have a not very hard time adapting your apps to the global uh, transport schema, because right now they are a mess. And we will have a common baseline that can be used by any apps. Bus lines don't necessarily stop at one border. Uh, you, you have, for, for, for my system, you get bus lines running into all three neighboring countries, where if we start having local schemas there, and a different local schema across the other border, um, it is it is not going to be easy to digest that data. Um, yeah, it's, you cannot imagine mapping one line in one schema into one border and then continue in a different schema and then finish in a third schema once you cross the, the other border. By local, I don't mean local to countries, I mean local to regions. There are some cities that, that yes, so when a mapper lives near the border, he is responsible not only for his part of the map behind his border, but usually he watches out for the whole region, including the other country. And there are many cities that uh, span multiple countries, like uh, Valga in uh, Estonia and Latvia, and there is some w weird city in uh, Belgium and Netherlands uh, border. And it doesn't mean that the tagging rules suddenly change when you get from one part of the city to another. Uh, because OpenStreetMap uh, doesn't take uh, country borders seriously, I think. It allows for some I intersection, uh, because we don't operate on local level uh, much. We uh, look out for the whole map, and we can come to agreement with people from different sides of the border. So I think that won't be an issue that much. Um, I'm sure. Uh, so uh, maybe first of all, I should say I'm not a proponent of, of dropping stop positions. Um, I think it makes things easier. I'm just like maybe trying to, to make people aware when, when we start like iteratively changing the schema and any app developer or any data user has to adapt multiple, ti multiple times over the next few years, I guess they get like... Uh, annoyed with, with frequent changes on, on, on how public transport is being mapped. And also, eventually, we will end up in a complete mess because there, are, at least in, in my country, in Austria, there are still many like bus routes in the rural area mapped in the, in the old schema and no one took time upgrading that so far. Well, th that is the real reality of OpenStreetMap itself is that it changes almost uh, all the time. Like in the past year, there were several improvements to public transport that most of you haven't even noticed, like hail and ride uh, role for highways, like reverse role for highways, like uh, the role, I forgot which one, for stops that are optional. And uh, the tagging in opposite map is constantly evolving and changing. So if you're using OpenStreetMap and not some created data set, not GTFS or Dino or whatever, uh, then you have to track these things to uh, be uh, in, in the known. So it, it happens, yes. But uh, w with the new schema, I think it uh, makes a great base, a great f fundament for building on top of it. So uh, the basic things, I hope, won't change. Yeah. So does anyone have any comments or should we adjourn? <laughs> So then uh, maybe like consider some next steps we would like to accomplish. So I think your proposal will get like some more comments and, and it will end up in a voting process. As I said in the beginning, the proposal has still, still has some issues regarding placement of stops and platforms and stuff like that. So I invite you all to read it and comment in the discussion sections. 
I don't intend to put it to voting uh, not until at least autumn. So we have many months ahead of us. So please read it and uh, maybe look at how it applies to your mapping in your region. So maybe you will have some comments. And I'd like to invite you to my lighting talk today at four, right before the closing session. Uh, I will be talking about GTFS and schedules, schedules in OpenStreetMap. <laughs> yeah. Th thank you, everyone, for coming. I just want to um, torture us and uh, deprive us from coffee. Uh, but um, we've been mostly talking rightly on the data model, but we allude that there are needs to, uh, to build tools. And the same way that collectively we want to make the data model evolving, maybe that would be good to try to have a sort of collective assessment of what exists in terms of tool sets, what would need to be fixed, what would need to be enhanced, who is doing what on that field, so that maybe people around us will want to, uh, I mean, build a sort of team to, uh, to do that, try to pull out resources. It's sometimes easy to do that as a couple of entities and groups and individuals. Um, and uh, so maybe during coffee or we can just try to uh, to see how we can just try to to collect and lay out the map of the one the people that want to to actually develop additional tools if such tools are needed okay so <laughs> any comments yeah yeah coffee thanks <laughs>